For every action figure to stock the toy store shelves, there's always some that never make it past the designer's hands. The result of lines getting cancelled, test groups and retailers passing on toy concepts, and return on investments just not adding up is an endless amount of toy prototypes that hide in the shadows of obscurity. In this week's episode, we uncover the stories of some toys that never quite made it to the retail stage. They were announced yet remained unreleased, unproduced for the masses of plastic crack craving kids at the end of the 20th century. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, subscribe, and strap in for some toy history. Toy companies always try to stay a year ahead. If a toy line takes off, they will need a second wave to keep up with the demand, but also to keep the attention of the fans. It won't come to you as a surprise that when a toy line gets cancelled, the upcoming toys remain unproduced. But what about the toys that slipped through the cracks and made it into a dealer catalog, or even folders that were included with the actual toys? Remember that toy you swear you saw, but somehow 20 years later no one sees seems to have it in their collections. Then again, you might just have remembered it wrong, or you were just looking at the promo catalog way too much. The year was 1994 when Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles subline Warriors of the Forgotten Sewer appeared in retail. They came with a cool new hero gimmick. It screened swords and sorcery. You had Savage Leo, Dwarf Donnie, Warrior Bebop, and Gatekeeper Rocksteady. And then there was also Knight Mike, he slipped into the smaller catalog supplied with the turtles, and years later I still haven't seen this toy, so there's got to be more to this tale of medieval sorcery. Now our first clue is the comic that all of these toys that got released were supplied with, in which a couple of turtles find a magic sword in the sewers, which allows them to travel back in time to the Dark Ages, but also gives them a medieval makeover. They're guided there by a sorcerer splinter who sends sends them on a quest to retrieve four mystical statues as they fight the warrior and gatekeeper. A little later they also get the help from a war cat who is suited with a red bandana like Raphael who is missing. And yes, the quest in the comic book, much like the sub toy line, was supposed to continue, but it didn't. The Toy Fair catalog showed a bit more of what was going on, and here we can find clue number two. More figures that never saw the light of day. Featuring Spellcaster Splinter, the way cool Wizard Rat, alongside Knight Mike, the Armored Wonder, and a double pack in which Savage Leo came with a sewer cat as his companion, this time sporting a blue bandana. So what was going to happen with Raph within this Warriors of the Forgotten Sewer toy line? Under the earth, below the light, there lies a place where magic melts with mutants and time turns back to a dark period. There in the cold of the sewer, a growl can be heard. The piercing wail of a warrior and his sewer tiger, Warcat. The magical mythical duo. Finally, TMNT's very own he-Man and Battle Cat. Spellcaster Splinter sporting a wizard outfit would have come with a rat staff and spell book. And Night Mike, who I've been wanting since 1994, ever since I got the little catalog, would have come with a sword, a halberd with a flag, and surely with a shield, or at least the hard copy shows that over here. Whenever these prototypes get uncovered, you still have to piece together all of the parts, just like a puzzle, and hope nothing gets lost. Seeing as the previous releases in the Forgotten Sewer line came with mythical statues, it wouldn't be wrong to assume they'd be thrown in once again as an extra, and perhaps part two of the comic. If we take a look at the sketch prints, another origin prevails as they detail the toys as part of Middle Earth. Was there a Lord of the Rings connection? Perhaps in the beginning, they would have started these toy concepts as a branded line. Playmates had done Universal Monsters and Star Trek Turtles before, so why not? Another reason could be that the Lord of the Rings license wasn't acquired and they just rebranded it to the Warriors of the Forgotten Sewer. They had a really cool sculpt, so they needed to get these out as soon as possible. These were really some of the coolest sculpts out there, and it's a shame we didn't get to expand the Turtles of the Rings 
universe a little bit more. I mean, were we gonna get a Black Knight Shredder or an Elf Turtle? I really wish I already had the Rat Plastic book on TMNT prototypes in my hands to get some more insights. The ring has awoken and I want answers why these prototypes got the you shall not <laughs> treatment. Now, Playmates wasn't the only toy company to pop as many as possible toy concepts in their catalogs. So let's head over to Mattel's Masters of the Universe. <laughs> the year is 1985, and you're a sales rep for Mattel. It's not unusual to get handed an extra pair of update sheets to keep maximizing that shelf space with Masters of the Universe products. Say hello to the evil robot, as seen on TV, but... I haven't seen this Super Soaker robot in any of the cartoons so far. Just when you thought Skeletor and his henchmen couldn't get any more horrible, this evil robot stalks on the scene. Wielding his laser burst gun, he acts as a mecha muscle to back up Skeletor on his wicked crusades. Crank his right arm and he shoots water from the gun on his left hand. His body holds enough water for extended attacks, there's bendable legs for action poses, so be sure to watch out because the latest revolting recruit to the evil warriors is on the loose. Okay, so we were gonna get a new robot for Masters of the Universe Adventures. Finally, a nemesis for Snout's Bout. And even though he's on Skeletor's side, he seems to be decorated with the Horde logo and colors. It would have definitely been cool to add a couple of these to the evil war trooper army. An evil robot army of walking water guns. Well, if you use your imagination, lasers. Mattel was definitely known to recycle things and even shop around the Japanese toy markets for toy concepts they could introduce within their existing lines. The Meteorps are a prime example where they took the toys and just popped them in without altering scale or anything. And the story for the evil robot seems to fit within that habit. We can trace the toy concept back to a Japanese squirt robot, which has the same mechanism and points of articulation, only the head sculpt seems to be altered to fit within the Motu universe. It's not too far-fetched that Mattel was trying to appeal to the Transformers GoBots market that had done so well in the previous two years, and even the chess beast Horde logo seems to be placed like one of those Decepticons Autobots rub signs. There was certainly more that meets the eye to this evil robot, and that takes us on to the next story. <laughs> now, Transformers was steering away more than ever from their robot characteristics in their Pretenders line. What is a Pretenders Transformer? They're robots in disguise. Yeah, it's a key component to all of these Autobots and Decepticons. But the Pretender is a special external armor shell that can disguise their very nature as a robot. No more hiding as a piece of machinery, a microscope, cassette deck, or a cool ride, pretender shells allow the Transformers to take on the appearance of a native life form. On the one side you had a human in battle armor, not looking suspicious at all, and for the Decepticons you had cool looking monsters that would definitely go unnoticed. Another thing that went unnoticed was the double pretender concept. You basically had a combiner bot within one pretender shell. Until 1996 rolled around and two prototype shells were on the showcase that year at the BotCon convention. On a special display table alongside a prototype for Unicron, we can see two unknown toy concepts. A four-armed spider creature and an armored gorilla. Now for each one, another prototype shell has been found with different paint scheme, so there's probably more out there. The gorilla is gray with red armor, and there's also a brown painted one with black armor. On the gray one, you can see he's wearing a helmet. He would have come with two weapons that could also hook up to its back. The spider came in a black and gray paint scheme, or just brown. It has a real villain look, ready to go to battle with bullet belts, teeth, claws, and horns everywhere. I haven't been able to trace down any accessories or guns for this one. And for both, nothing seems to be known about the combiner bot that would have been inside. Would they have taken the animal or insect team a bit further? Nobody knows, but the double pretender would have given the kids four characters in total to play with. They would have also been the same size as a regular pretender, but they would have opened at the back to extract or hide the inner robot. Unlike the 
the regular pretender shells that opened up down the middle. On the gorilla's shoulder you can kind of see the hinges of how they would open up. And for our next toy concept you didn't need any infrared vision. This guy was in plain sight in most of the toy catalogs but somehow remained unreleased. Thundercats Red Eye was another toy concept which Prototype not only found its way to the Toy Fair but also the LGN's catalogs where he proudly poses next to the Rampagers, Driller and Stinger. A new assortment including not just ordinary characters but unique action toys. Red Eye shoots flying discs from his chest and has poseable limbs and head. The toy is based on a cartoon where he is a member of the fearsome Lunatics. From the dark moon of Plum He's got enhanced vision capabilities allowing him to see in infrared, so he's able to detect any unproduced toys out there. He has the disc shooting action in which he uses the spinning disc is called the Sidewinder. And before he shoots it out, the disc can also be used to shoot electrical beans, but will let your imagination take care of that. It was going to be the first of the Lunatacks to be released. Red Eye was definitely in the cartoon enough times to get a character developed into a toy and even had a fun gimmick. They poured heart and soul into creating this toy from sketch to blueprint to engineering the action feature and even prepping the card art for this one. Just a couple steps away from being added to an LGN 12 pack shipper box onto the next Toys R Us. But somewhere down the line he got lost into the endless abyss of unproduced toys. The end. I want to give special thanks to Chris Fawcett who has been helping me out with the TMNT part of this video today. Be sure to check out his Rad Plastic book on TMNT prototypes and the toy line. You can find the link down below. I would have definitely loved some more Warriors of the Forgotten Sewer toys, but which toy concept in this video could have been on your Christmas list back in the day? Leave it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video then please like and subscribe because subscribing is free and I put out weekly 80s and 90s toy videos. As always, I'd like to thank all of my supporters on Patreon, and if you want to join the Patreon, you can always check it out if you want to do more. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. See you later. Bye.